Welcome back everybody. I took a little bit of time off to do these videos and all that stuff. Uh, but you know what? Uh, Celebrity Big Brother is on right now. The first episode aired last night. I'm really, really, really excited for the season. I do plan on doing recaps and, and talk about the season and all that stuff with you guys. Put some videos out on YouTube. Uh, things like that. So last night I watched the episode with Evil Dick, uh, Keith from BB13, and Peter Brown from BB Can 1. Uh, we all watched the show together. And then we did Evil Dick's podcast, Dick at Night. Um, you should check that out. It's um, you know it's a really, really good one. We have a lot of good opinions and different views on the game and stuff like that. And it, you know, just... That that being said, it's very interesting uh, when you watch a show with with just different types of characters, different different types of people. The way that we all see the game is very very different, um, which is great. It, it's it's a great thing because you can see how other people view the game, and they can kind of see how you view it, uh, and so on. Anyway. Um, um, you know, uh, I wasn't very aware of a lot of the celebrities that I didn't know who a lot of them were going into the show, but that doesn't matter. You know, it really, really, really doesn't matter because the people putting the show together, they know what they're doing. It's, it's a show more than anything. They're not going to get people like Kim Kardashian or, you know, Justin Bieber. They're not going to go in this house. So you got to just take it for what it is. And the celebrities that do come in are the ones you're going to get. And that's fine. It's, it's, it's a show about drama. That's what everyone watches the show about. Anyway, it's a show about drama and stuff like that and, and Robin Cass is very 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 good at what she does and she knows what she's doing when she puts these casts together so you might not know who these who some of these people are but that's okay it doesn't matter whenever you watch you know BBUS or BB can you don't know who any of these people are and you know for the for the most part it turns out to be a good season yes I understand it's supposed to be celebrity and it's supposed to be a little bit different I get it but you know what be happy with what you get be happy that you get another big brother uh, outlet and you get to watch another show uh, and stuff like that that's the way I look at it just be thankful for what you get um, also, I'm wondering, you know, comment below, leave comments below who you're cheering for, who do you want to win and not necessarily who you want to win. Also post like who you, who you think is going to win because, you know, for instance, for myself, I'm loving Tom Green, even before yesterday's episode, I know they kind of pushed his character yesterday a bit. Um, you know, that, that he was putting all those funny jokes and all that stuff, but I was cheering for him before the episode, uh, him and Lolo, uh, Lolo Jones as well. Those are, those are the two people I'm really, really cheering for. Uh, Tom Green is actually from Ottawa where I'm from. He is Canadian and all that stuff. So, you know, as soon as I saw that, you got to cheer for your Ottawa boy. Plus, he's hilarious. Uh, he, I, I just think he's hilarious. He was on shows and movies, uh, you know, all where I was growing up and stuff like that. So I've always I've always followed him and known who he was and all that stuff. Um, anyway, I think he's hilarious. Uh, getting into that a little bit, Tom Green's humor is one of those where... Uh, it, either you love it or you hate it. There's no middle ground with it. Either you think he's hilarious or you think he's annoying. And a character like that is perfect for the show, for the entertainment and all that stuff. It's perfect because it's it's the kind of guy that's going to get in good with people and it's the guy, kind, of, kind of guy that's going to cause the drama with other people. They're going to get fed up with him and annoyed with him and stuff like that. So he's perfect for a show like this. Um, and I personally love the humor. So yeah, leave comments below who you think is going to win, who you want to win, who you're cheering for, things like that. Um, it's, it could be very different. For instance, I'm cheering for Tom Green and Lolo. Do I think they're going to win? Probably not. Tom Green, I definitely don't see him winning, but I am cheering for him along the way. Uh, Lolo has a chance. I, 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 you know, everyone has a chance, but I, I'd say she has a better chance than Tom Green uh, to win. Anyway, it's anybody's game. Big brother is big brother. You know, the people you usually think that are going to win uh, never do. So anyway, it's going to be really fun. I, I'm really looking forward to this season. I will be doing more recaps and stuff like that. Um, and I'm going to get into it a little bit. I'll start breaking it down. I'll break down yesterday's episode, uh, maybe the characters a little bit, uh, where I think they might fit in, stuff like that. So anyway, guys, let's get to it. So the first person I do want to talk about is Lolo Jones. Um, you know, I like her character. I like her personality. She seems to have uh, some good humor and a good sense of humor and stuff like that. She's also a monster. She's a winter and a summer uh, Olympian. Just to be an Olympian in the first place is no easy feat. These are the best in the world at what they do. You know, the best, the absolute best. And they compete against the absolute best every single time. So the fact that she can do it in, I believe it's bobsled and hurdling are the two... Um, her two sports that she plays, that's incredible. That's amazing. Just to be able to do it once, but not only do it once, but do it twice, incredible. So um, she definitely has that, you know, um, that drive, that commitment, uh, that mindset 
to, you know, get what she wants. And I love that. So, and now I'm not saying that these competitions in Big Brother are going to be, you know, catered to, you know, an Olympian's going to have an advantage over someone else. The competitions, for the most part, have nothing to do with that. They could be mental. They could be, you know, uh, putting a puzzle together, whatever it is. There's so many different types of competitions that being an athlete doesn't mean she's just going to win every single competition because a lot of the competitions have nothing to do with your athletic ability. It's memory or whatever it is, but the majority is not athletic ability. I mean, and if it was she would just crush them anyway so i'm absolutely loving lolo jones i think she's gonna do amazing um and yeah let's let's see what happens so that's lolo jones um next i want to talk about tom green i talked about tom green a little bit already um he's from ottawa he's a comedian he did a stint on a celebrity apprentice he didn't do too well there but hopefully he'll take his experience from that and that's the thing man when you're in this kind of industry or you've played and you know like myself where i played on season three and i played again on season five you take that experience you bring it into the house again uh you know you learn from it now some people don't learn from their mistakes some people don't take the experience and learn from it others do hopefully tom's one of those guys that can take the experience from you know the celebrity apprentice and he he realizes and learns okay this is how this kind of stuff works it is a show it's a business maybe i can you know make myself a main character this time around and and so far i know it's only been one episode but so far he seems to know what he's doing he's playing to the camera he's playing to the diary room he's saying those one-liners you know he's a comedian he has material lined up already that he wants to use in the house for sure. So it's just a matter of getting that platform and getting him out there and to show his material. I think he's going to do very, very well in the diary room. I think people are going to love him. I think it's going to be great for his, maybe not career, but at least for, you know, his own image and, and his own, you know, social stuff, whatever it is. I think it's going to be great for him. I think he's going to do well. So that's Tom Green. Yes, I'm cheering for him 100% and also Lolo Jones. Okay, next I want to talk about Tamar Braxton. Now, this is someone that I, I really didn't know much about before the show at all. Um, but I do know she's a super fan of the show. She is a fan of the show. She watches it. She tweets along with the show, uh, you know, the American version while it's on TV. She, she'll be tweeting along with the show, stuff like that. So she is a fan of the show. She is aware of the game. Now, I'm not going to say it's a big advantage because you've seen what happened last year with Shannon Elizabeth and other players that they know the game. They kind of get they kind of get in there and, and they kind of try to run too fast. And, you know, that's normal. It happens. Whatever. Um, but you know, uh, so she is familiar with the show. She gets it. She knows about strategy and alliances and stuff like that. Hopefully she knows about putting personal stuff aside, which I'll get into a little bit. Um, she does have a little bit of beef there with, with candy and stuff, but I'll get into that a little bit, but you know, she gets the game. Hopefully she understands the game. She's watched enough of the show that she gets the game. And I'm not going to say she's like this amazing player, but she gets the basics, the fundamentals, you know, at least the base level that'll help her get by, have a step up on people that don't even know the game at all. Um, and like someone like Ryan Lochte, which he doesn't even know what an HOH or a veto is. He doesn't know what's going on, you know, stuff like that. So at least she knows what's going on. She understands alliances where someone like, like Lochte has to learn as he goes. and He's going to make those stupid mistakes and they're going to get him kicked out of the house. So anyway, um, don't know much about her. I know she's Tony Braxton's sister. Um, she has a little bit of beef with, uh, Candy, um, I believe she's one from the Housewives of Atlanta. Um, they have some pre-game history and stuff like that. But I'm going to get into a little bit um, about it later. But I liked how she kind of, for the HOH competition, she kind of reached out to her and blah, blah, blah. I will get into that later. But anyway, that's uh, Tamara Braxton. Sorry, I'm, I don't know too much about her. I just know she's a super fan. Uh, and she does follow along with the show. All right, now I want to talk about Ryan Lochte. Okay, so... Um, Okay, this guy, he seems a little bit lost in there, whatever. Um, you know, and here's the thing. I wasn't even much of a fan of his before when he was in the Olympics and stuff like that. Just the whole, um, I, I believe it, when he, they were in Brazil, I believe... Uh, he, he made up some story about he got robbed or something like that. I don't, I don't know the details. Don't quote me on it. But he did some, like, there's some scandal with him. Um, and I just, I've always gotten the vibe that he's very, uh, like, you know, full of himself. And, and just, you know, just whatever. Anyway, and I'm just usually not into people like that. Um, anyway. So we're in the show here. He, he's never seen the show. He doesn't know what's going on. doesn't know HOH. doesn't know any of that stuff. Now, another thing I want to tell you guys, if you want to audition for the show, if you're a fan or not, okay, if you want to audition for the show and you want to play on the show, at least do your homework. At least watch one season, two seasons, three seasons, whatever it is, do your homework. You're going in the Big Brother house. Don't just walk in there and be like, okay, now what? What do I do? Be prepared. That's the trick. Be prepared. Watch a season or two. So this guy doesn't know anything, doesn't know what a veto is, doesn't know anything like that, whatever. That's on him. Um, okay, so the editing, uh, I mean, it could be true. It could be played up a little bit, but they're making him seem like the dummy. 
hey, it could be true. But this guy, you got you to, I also try to look at all the positives in the guy too. He's a world-class athlete. This guy is not just an Olympian swimmer. This is one of the best Olympian swimmers in the world. He has something like six golds or I don't know. He, he named them off, uh, which is impressive. You know, I'll never take anything away from somebody if, you know, if I'm a fan of them or not, if I like them or not, whatever. I'll never take anything away. That guy, what he did in his life with the, with the Olympian stuff and the, and the swimming is very, very, very impressive. This guy is a monster. He can compete. He's an athlete. This guy is, you know, a top-tier athlete. So it'll be – I I'd really want to see him compete and stuff. Um you know the whole game aspect of how he's going to play who knows but you know at the, you got to look at the other side of it it could be very entertaining because he doesn't know what he's doing he's green he's gonna make all those dumb mistakes that you're gonna laugh at and stuff like that which is great i mean it's good for the show and again that's what i'm talking about how when they cast these people they know what they're doing and um you know i think he'll be good for the show one way or another if he's you know popular or hated or whatever i think he's good for the show so uh that's ryan lochte um yeah let's see how he does Okay, now I want to talk about Natalie Eva Marie, I believe her name is. She's a WWE diva, uh, stuff like that. Uh, she says she's played a villain role. Again, I'm not too familiar with her. I don't follow wrestling anymore. I, I mean, I used to follow it religiously as a kid, um, you know, the Hulkmania days. But um, anyway... I don't I don't follow wrestling anymore. So I don't I don't know much about her, but she's stunning. She seems very athletic and she seems like she can get along with people. I mean, we've only seen a few minutes of her. I don't know. Uh, she might rub people the wrong way, whatever. But I think she's gonna do very, very well. Um, I really want to see her compete. She seems like she can do very, very well. And um, you know, I found it very interesting in the first HOH competition where nobody picked her to be on their team. I found that a little bit interesting. That can almost say a lot because that can mean that nobody really cares to pair up with her. So I don't know what happened, uh, what we missed uh, in the first few minutes or hours, whatever, before they did the competition. But it's kind of funny to see that she was one of the people that didn't get picked to be on a team. So she doesn't really have a friend right now in the house. Um, but anyway, again, I don't know much about her, sadly. Um, I didn't do any research on her or anything like that. I'm just going about what I saw in the episode last night. And um, you know what? I don't know. I, I hope she does well. She's another person that I am cheering for. I uh, just I kind of like the persona. I like everything. I just I, I I think she'll do well. I think again she fits in well for the show. I think she's gonna do well. Hopefully she doesn't quit and she stays the whole time. Okay, next I want to talk about Kato Kalin. Um, okay, so I was about thirteen or fourteen years old when the OJ trial was on, and. Um, so, I, you know, I was a little bit too young to know, like, all the, the main details of the, of the stuff, of, of the trial and all stuff. But he is one of those names that you remember. He was, like, the main um, witness and all that stuff. Uh, and that's how his claim to fame came. He's done thousands of podcasts since then and shows and interviews and this and that. So, um, you know, you hear a story and, and, and he's, he's done very well in life over that. Just because of that, he was, like, basically O.J. Simpson's roommate or something like that. Anyway, guys, he... Um, He's a very outgoing person. He's one of those guys that can get along with people easily. Um, and, and, you know, in, in a game like this, that's very, very important. This is a social game. And I, I think a lot of people forget that. People forget Big Brother is a social game. That's all it is. It's not about competitions. It's not about anything. It's a social game. Be friendly in there. Make friends in there. If you have friends in there, no one's going to want to get rid of you. If you're friends with half the house, you don't have to worry when half the house wins HOH. That's the part of the game. You don't have to win everything. And I and I feel like people forget that when they go in and it's like, oh, this person's going to win because they're just an athlete. This person's going to win the game because they're going to win every competition. No, that's not how it works. If someone starts winning too many competitions, they become a target. If you don't win any competitions, people see you as weak. But if you're friends with everybody and you don't win any competitions, no one's going to need to get rid of you. So that's the thing. I think if he has that social game uh, to keep him in there, it'll do well. I think he's going to do very, very well. I mean, it can go either way. Again, he wasn't picked um, in the first HOH, so he doesn't really have a friend right now. So that's kind of, you know, interesting. But I, was, I feel like once he gets his claws into people and he starts getting his social game going, I think he'll do okay. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to be this amazing player, but uh, I think he'll do okay. He just has to get in with everybody first. Okay, next is Joey Lawrence. So everybody knows him from Blossom. Uh, you know, he has that catchphrase, whoa, you know, the whole thing. I was, I grew up with that too, man. I, you know, I was a young kid when, um, when that show was on and anyway, we all used to watch it. So um, he is a fan of the show. Um, I understand he's a fan of the show and this and that. Um, whatever, he, he seems like he's uh, 
I don't know. He's one of those guys. I think he's going to go in a little bit too fast. I, I, you know, I think he's going to be a great guy. I'm, you know, I think he's going to be a really good guy and all that stuff. I just think he's one of those guys that goes in and games too fast, too hard, and it might catch up to him. Um, so again, I don't know too too much about him. I just know about him from the Blossom days and this and that. Uh, and yesterday's episode, he seemed okay. I mean, he seemed to get along with people and stuff like that. Uh, he was picked, I think, second or third or something like that in the HOH comp. So um, you know, people might see him a little bit high up there on the list. Um, yeah, Joy Lawrence, not too much I, I can say about him, um, except for, whoa, <laughs> that's about it, man. That's all I got on him. Okay, now I want to talk about Dina Lohan. All right, so I'm not a big fan of her. I don't know. Something about her rose me the wrong way. Um, I think she'll be great for the show, though. I think she's... Um, I think she's going to do very well for the show, this and that. I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel it. I don't know. There's something about her. I just, not my thing. Um, but something that's very interesting is, um, um, what's his name? Jonathan Bennett. Okay. So Jonathan Bennett used to, uh, was in Mean Girls with Lindsay Lohan, which is Dina Lohan's daughter. So, okay. I'm going to tell you something, guys. This stuff in, in Big Brother, you don't know anybody in the house. Everyone's kind of on this like even playing field. Um, you have no friends in there. If you have the littlest, littlest bit of connection with somebody, it could be the littlest thing, okay, the smallest little thing, uh, you grasp on it. So uh, Jonathan Bennett and Lindsay Lohan's mom, Dina Lohan, um, they might know each other just through proxy, just through Lindsay Lohan, they might know of each other, this and that. They perhaps they might have even known each other were going on the show beforehand just because of that connection. Who knows? I'm not saying they did or they didn't, but you know, there was rumors that Lindsay Lohan's mom was going on the show. He obviously knew he was going on the show. Maybe they reach out a little bit, say, Hey, listen, blah blah blah. I'm gonna be on the show, don't say anything. You never know. I'm not saying it happened, I'm saying you never know. Um but about, about her, so I'm just, I don't know, I just wasn't a big fan of her, um, you know, there was rumors that she paid uh, $10,000 or whatever, I don't know, she paid money to get on the show, I don't know if I believe that, I think these people get paid like a hundred grand or something to get on the show, I heard Omarosa last year got close to a million uh, to play, which is insane, because they're there for four weeks, so to make, you know, even a hundred thousand dollars in four weeks, that's insane, that's, that's absolutely insane, um, anyway, so uh, Dina Lohan, you didn't really see much of her last night on the show, which I'm a little bit surprised. I thought she would have been, you know, kind of a, a, a main character in, in some kind of storyline. I know they don't have much to play with right now, but I, I figured she would be. Um, I think she's going to be, so there's going to be some fireworks coming out of her uh, sometime this season. She's not going to get along with a lot of people. Um, hopefully she brings something to the table. I think she has the tools to bring something to the table, um, you know, at least being a villain or something like that. Uh, hopefully she doesn't just become a piece of furniture and just sits on a couch and does nothing. But anyway, whatever. I think her role there is to be uh, either a villain or entertainer. Uh, let's see if she does that. So I don't really have too much about her. Um, you know, Lindsay Lohan's mom. That's how I know her as, and uh, as a lot of people do too. So anyway, uh, that's Dina Lohan. Okay, now, now I want to talk about Jonathan Bennett. This guy is a huge fan of the show, a uh, super fan of the show. Um... He was he co-starred with Lindsay Lohan in uh, Mean Girls, and that's how his connection with Dina Lohan. I just talked about that. Um, anyway, so he's a, he's a huge fan of the show. He has a lot of friends in the community, supposedly a Big Brother community alumni and all that stuff. He has a lot of friends, so I'm sure they gave him some tips and stuff like that. Now, here's the thing, guys. You know, when you're looking for tips, you know. There's so many bad players out there. There's so many bad players out there. And if you're taking tips from the bad players, buddy, you're just going to get out that door. So hopefully his friends in the community are good players. They understand the game. They get it. And they gave him the right advice. Hopefully he's not listening to whatever. I don't want to say any names. But hopefully he's not listening to those uh, players that are there and just making a fool whatever. Hopefully he's there to play. Hopefully he listened to the right players. Um... And, and, and all that. So uh, I'm actually excited to see how he does. Hopefully he doesn't get that super fan fever and that, you know, where they go in. It's that curse where they go in like Shannon Elizabeth last year. And they just get so excited to be there because, you know, this is a dream of theirs. And they love the show and blah, blah, blah. And they get in there and they're just in hyper mode. And, you know, it just their game blows up in front of them. So hopefully... Um, he, he gets it and he calms down and he goes in just kind of with a calm uh, mindset and, you know, kind of observes the area and just kind of, okay, this is what my competition is. Soak it all in, soak it all in, soak it all in, and then start making your moves. Uh, hopefully he can do that because, you know, we've seen it time and time again where the super fan goes in and they're so excited and they want to show that they can play and, you know, it just bites them in the ass in the end. So, uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm liking, I'm liking this guy. I'm like, I hope, uh, I hope he does well. I want to see how he does uh, moving forward. And I think he'll do 
okay. I think he's got a, he's in a good uh, position right now. People want to be his friend. Nobody really has any problems with him. I know it's still very, very early. But I think he's a likable enough guy to make enough friends uh, to get pretty far, if not near the end or to the end in this game. I, I have uh, my eyes on him. I think he's going to do okay. Hopefully, anyways. So my last three, I don't know much about... Um, Candy Burris, uh, she's from the Housewives of Atlanta. She has a little bit of beef um, with another um, Tamar, I believe it is. Uh, Ricky Williams is an ex-NFL player. Supposedly he signed one of the worst deals in history. And Anthony Scaramucci. I'll talk about Anthony Scaramucci a bit because um, I don't know. I, I don't follow politics at all. Uh, so I don't really know his story and all stuff. But I will tell you something. Politicians, their job is... That's, this is their job. Their job is to schmooze people, to, to, to talk to people, to kind of butter them up and, and make them do what they want with their words. That's what politicians do. They use their words. Like I tell my kids when they're fighting with each other, use your words. You know, these politicians, they use their words. That's how they get ahead in life. And I'm telling you, man, this guy is one of the best in the business. They get ahead by using their words and to manipulate people. And the thing with these kind of politicians and these these greasy people, and I'm not saying in a bad way, a greasy person, I'm not saying in a bad way, he's just a businessman and he's a smooth one and he's good, he's really good at what he does, is they know how to find the weakness in somebody. So, you know, like say, for instance, I'll use me as an example. If I'm in a house with someone like that, Okay, you can read through it and say, this guy's slimy. He's just trying to, you know, sell me something. He's just trying to build me up. He's just, he's throwing me, you know, he's, he's just trying to, you know, whatever. And I can see through that. And a lot of people can. I'm not saying, you know, I'm the only one. There's a lot of people that can do it. But there's also a lot of people that can't. And they will fall for that stuff. So when he's buttering them up, you know, and that's where these people are good you know, the people like Skirmoshi, where they find the weakness in somebody. They'll f they'll scan, they'll scan, they'll scan. Oh, it doesn't work on Bruno. Oh, it doesn't work on this person. Oh, it doesn't work on this person. Oh, but it works on this person. This is my person I'm going to I'm gonna work on. So they'll butter them up. They'll talk to them. And they know how to get in their head. That's what they do. I think this guy's a really, really, really good talker. I think he's going to be able to manipulate a couple of people. Maybe not everyone. Maybe people will be on to him. The thing is, is... I don't know American politicians. I don't know Canadian politicians. I don't know anything about politics. But I think this guy's name is big enough where everyone in there knows who he is. So that's the only thing that can work against him is people know who he is. They know he's a politician. They know he's a schmoozer and all that stuff. They can just be like, yeah, whatever. And they can dismiss him already. Where I think if nobody knew who this guy was and he goes in the house and he starts doing his thing, maybe it won't seem as greasy or anything like that. But uh, I'm really excited to see how he plays. I, I think he has, I mean, he has the tools to win the show simply because his job is basically big brother. So he's bringing his work into his play area is what he's doing. So I like that. I like that he's doing that. Also, I want to say they're bringing a guy like that in the show because, you know, Omarosa was on it last year and she, um, she, you know, she did the whole, she was talking about the White House and the president and all that stuff and people loved it. They ate that stuff up. They loved it. So to get a guy like him in there, you know, they're just like, this is a gold mine. This is perfect. He's going to want to talk about it. He's going to want, you know, and everyone's going to want to listen. So be prepared that this season, once he starts talking about politics, you're going to get those, you know, two, three minute segments again about politics uh, just coming out of his mouth this time instead of Omarosa. So, um, I, I, I like the character. I really like the fact that he's in there. I, again, I don't even know who he is, but just, I heard a little bit of his backstory. He got fired, whatever, blah, 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 because he said some, some stuff and, uh, just his character. I think he's going to, for this show, that's a great character. That's a great, great, great character for the show. So anyway, guys, that's, that's the cast. I'll, uh, I'm going to start breaking down the uh, episode now and just how things played out and, and what I see and where I saw and, and, uh, and just things like that. All right, so I want to talk about my boy Tom again. I'm not done talking about him. Uh, Tom Green. So I was really excited to hear he was going in the house. I didn't, this is before the episode and all that stuff. As soon as I saw Tom Green's name released, I was pumped, man. He's like I say, he's an Ottawa boy. Uh, I just, I love his humor. I like that stuff. It's just hilarious. Um, but again, like I said, it can go both ways. His kind of humor is, is, is the kind that you're going to love it or you're going to hate it. And if you hate it, you're not going to want to live with it. Trust me, I've been in that house. If you, if you don't like someone's personality, sometimes even just, you got to sacrifice game. Be like, man, I can't live with this person for whatever, four, 10, 15 weeks, whatever the hell it is. So, um, he can get under people's skin or he can, you know, get along with everyone. It's, 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 it's very 50, 50. Um, and, you know, I'm just really, 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 really excited to see him play. Uh, that's Tom Green. So anyway, um, I want to get into the Tamar and Candy uh, situation. So they have a lot of they supposed to have pregame beef. They've known each other for a while. They had problems with each other before the game, blah, blah, blah. 
one thing I really, 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 really liked. I don't remember who it was that was picked. If it was uh, Tamar and she picked Candy, I don't remember, or if it's vice versa. But I really liked how they were in the HOH competition, and they had to pick um, a character, or not a character, sorry, a person. So they had to pick a partner. So everyone had to pick a partner um, who they wanted to pair up with for the competition. And I don't remember who it was, if it was Tamara or Candy, but they picked the other one. So we'll just say Tamara picked Candy to be her partner. Even though they have pre-game drama, she's like, I'm going to put that aside and I'm thinking game first. That is a game move. That is a player. That is someone that's thinking with their head. And that's amazing. That's a thinker, not an emotional player. And I love that. And I give her a lot of respect for that. And I love that. She's thinking, hey, I have a problem with this girl. I need to fix this now before it becomes a bigger problem. I'm going to reach out and say, hey, I want to be your partner. Let's work together. Let's squash this. And let's play the game together. That is great. I loved that. So that's something to look out for. Tomorrow, that's that's great. Great move. I like that. And that's something to look out for. Someone that can think with their head and leave their emotions aside. Okay, so before I get too far ahead about this competition, I'll break it down a little bit. So they all get called into the backyard. And someone's name gets picked by random. I believe it was Ryan Lochte. Uh, his name gets picked by random. Then you pick your partner. So uh, he had anybody to pick from. And he picked Jonathan Bennett, I believe that was. Uh, I think it was Jonathan he picked. Uh, I could be wrong there. But anyway, you can pick your partner, okay? So he picks his partner, and then his partner gets to pick the next person to pick their partner, and so on, and, and so forth, and all that stuff. So, um, Eva, what's her, Natalie Eva Marie, and Kato Kalin were the two that were not picked. So, the little twist in that was, if you're not picked, you're, you're safe for the week. You don't have to play, you're safe for the week, put your feet up, you don't have to worry about anything. And I've been involved in something like that. In season three, there was like the slop thing going on, and the, or it was a have-not competition. And the last two people that weren't picked, they were halves for the week, don't have to worry about it, see you later. And it was myself and possibly Cindy, I think it was. Anyway, that's not important. So um, I've been in something like that. So anytime, here's a little heads up, guys. If you're in the house and there's a competition where you gotta do a schoolyard pick, where it's like boom, 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 okay? Man, guys, pay attention and think about what you're doing because this is twice now they've done that and both times I've seen it, once I was included in it and once in this one here, the two people that were not picked were free of whatever, not being able to be nominated, they were halves for the week. So use that in a little bit of a strategy, guys. Everything in that game has to do with strategy. So use it, you know, use it in a strategy. Anyway, so that's the, that's the, 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 the way the schoolyard picks were done. And now to the competition. Um, it was, they were basically sitting on swings and they had to fill, a, a one, one of the partners had to fill up a cup of champagne, swing back and forth, pass it to his partner. They had to fill up their cup and they had to get a balloon out or something, whatever, something like that. So um, here's the thing, guys, okay? You know, they're, they're, they're struggling and this and that, and they can't move. And I know everybody at home is going, oh, man, how hard is that? It's just the swings and this and that. And I was watching it with Evil Dick, Keith, Peter, whatever, whoever we were watching it with, and they had the same reaction. And I'm like, guys, th listen to me, okay? They're, these are world-class athletes on these swings. There is uh, people that have won 10 medals, gold medals, sitting in that swing. If they can't swing, trust me, you sitting at home on the couch cannot swing. I'm telling you, these are athletes. Their bodies are in the best shapes and you're not, you are not in better shape than these people. If they can't swing, trust me, there's a reason for it. These competitions look so easy at home. And I say it all the time. These competitions aren't as easy as you think. So these Olympians, these gold Olympic athletes can't swing on this swing, but you sitting at home says, oh, what a dummy. I could do that. Yeah, okay, bud. Anyways, um, so... Obviously, it's a lot harder. It looks like, you know, like those kids that have those jolly jumpers and stuff. It almost looked like that where it was hard to kind of think. They had no traction for their feet to get themselves going. They literally had to start from a, from just a hanging position. It's hard to get momentum like that, especially when there's the ropes and all that stuff. Anyway, um, it's not as easy as it looks, guys. So anyway, Ryan Lochte and who's his partner, I don't remember who it was, um, win, win Nature Witch. Now, here's another twist to go with that. Which I kind of like, you know, I'm not a fan of twists, but this is something fresh. It's something I liked. I like the, the twist they did on it where, so they had the partners and the, so the partners win together and now they have to go head to head um, to see who is the actual HOH. But here's the big twist. Whoever loses is automatically on the block. So that is key. So Big Brother throws a little wrench in because listen to this, okay? 
These people, he had the first pick to uh, pick anybody. Ryan Lochte could have picked anybody, and he picked his partner. So that's someone he's saying, I had the I had the pick of the litter. I could have picked any single person out of anybody in this cast, and I picked you. And so that's someone that he wanted to buddy up with. That was someone he wanted to work with, you know, get a little thing going or whatever. And now, by winning, his buddy can technically go home. That's the thing. So with this competition... I really liked it. I really, really did like it. I like that twist on it and all that stuff. Now, I don't know if it's going to be an ongoing thing every week or not. It would kind of be interesting if it was. Because think about it, okay, guys? Now, if this is an ongoing twist, not only do you want to win the competition, so you want to pick a partner that you're going to win the competition with, but you got to be smart enough to think, oh, man, if I do win this competition, I have to be better and better than this person and be able to beat them in another competition. So you have to kind of get a, a good enough player to win with, but not, not good enough to beat you on that one-on-one. -on -one. So it gets a little tricky. So I almost hope that they keep this little twist going because it, it changes the game and it has a good aspect, a new aspect and a new view on the game, which I really, really, really like. So it really changes the dynamic because now you want to build a, bring a partner that you, you want to win. I got to bring this person. But if I lose, I can go home. If I lose on that one-on-one, -on -one, I can go home. It's a totally different aspect of the game. And I really, really like that. So you got to almost be strategic on who you pick as your partner. Now, I don't know if they're going to do it every single week or if it's just a one-time thing, but it would be really interesting to see if they did it every single week. I just think it would change the game dramatically. So uh, anyway, so uh, Ryan and uh, Buddy, uh, whoever it is, I think it was Johnny, uh, win HOH. Now they got to play head-to-head. -head. They haven't played yet. We don't know what happens, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, uh, one of them will be on the block, and I don't know how they're going to do the other one, um, who, uh, the other nominee. I don't know how that works. I guess the HOH is going to pick one person, I guess. I have no idea. But uh, anyway, that's it. So, guys, uh, you know, thank you for watching this video. Uh, leave comments below who you think is going to win, who you want to win, um, things you want me to break down. I was thinking of doing a, a segment on, on broken comps because I, you know, there's a bunch of competitions I played um, on season three, season five, where there were broken comps. If you figure them out, you can win the comp. Things that went wrong, whatever, stuff like that. Uh, let me know what you want, what you guys want to hear. Uh, I got lots of tricks. I got lots of behind the scenes stuff I know about and, and just how the, the system works and everything. So. Guys, thank you for watching. Uh, hit that sub button. Hit that like button. I will be doing a lot of these. I'm getting back into it. You're going to see a bunch of different videos from Big Brother stuff, gaming stuff, just life stuff. I got a lot of stuff coming. Um, I just, it's the time. I got, I, you know, I got to figure out the time. So, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I see you. I feel you. Thank you for the love. You guys have been amazing to me. Um, you know, I'm just the luckiest man to have you, you people, you know, just that want to hear what I want to say and all that stuff. Thank you very much. Guys, have a great time. Till next time, I'll be making more videos. Peace.